Today we're continuing our series on the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5. In these statements that are found at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus describes those who are blessed. As we talked about last week, that means those who are approved by God. And so the next one we're going to talk about is found in verse 4. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Jesus here talks about those who mourn, and there are a couple ways that we need to understand this. That there is a mourning that takes place when one recognizes that he has sinned, that he sinned against God, that this is a mourning over sin. Paul would describe in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 that this type of guilt, or as he described it there, godly sorrow, helps lead us to repentance. And so we might mourn over sin, but we also may mourn over simply the fact that life is difficult, that we face hardships. Job recognized in Job 14 and verse 1 that man is short-lived and full of turmoil or full of trouble. So we understand that we may mourn and sorrow in this life because of sins that we have committed and the guilt and the and the consequences that come from that and also because life is difficult and life has sorrow that is wound into it and ingrained in it and so we may sorrow over these things we may mourn over these things jesus said blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted he provides comfort if we mourn over sin, He provides comfort in the form of forgiveness, that He will forgive us of our sins. A little bit later in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus would tell, tell someone that to take courage because your sins are forgiven. That we can take comfort or take courage. We can gain encouragement from the fact that Jesus is willing to forgive us of our sins. And also, as we look forward to the reward that He offers in eternity, that all of the trouble that we face in this life will be a thing of the past. Revelation 21 and verse 4 says that He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no longer any death, no sorrow, nor crying, or pain, because all of those things have passed away. Jesus says if you mourn, you will be comforted, but it takes us coming to Him and following Him to be one of His disciples. Otherwise, we will just remain in the state of mourning, that there will be no hope, there will be no comfort. We have to come to Him. And so as He's describing those who would be His disciples, there are a couple things that we need to do. One, we need to recognize that our sin is something that we should sorrow over, is something to mourn about, that we should not be content in sin and to remain in sin but instead recognize that it is better to give up our sin, to follow Christ, and receive the forgiveness that He offers. We also need to mourn over the sorrows of this life. To not be deceived or deluded into think that, well, this life is all that we need. This life, everything that I want is in this life. Everything that I could desire, I have in this life. That's a short-sighted view. This world is passing away. This world will not last forever. And this world is filled with heartache. This world is filled with trouble and sorrow. We need to recognize there is something better. There is something that He offers for eternity where all of the hardships of this life will be a thing of the past. So we need to recognize those things if we are going to follow Jesus. If we are going to be one of His disciples, we need to recognize that it is better to serve Him than to remain in sin. And it is better to follow after Him to gain the reward of heaven than to be content with what this world has to offer.